Alex Hansery here. It is August 26th in the year 2017. Coming at you from off the grid in southwest Colorado. I have a newscast planned for you. We're going to talk about uh, the Afghan war and the statements of Donald Trump, as well as the retort from Ron Paul. We're also going to talk about the Russia Army War Games. Also, a new propaganda video from North Korea threatening the United States. And we're seeing all this at the tail end of the total solar eclipse as a major hurricane hits southern Texas. Some say the direction in which it hit Texas uh, is actually quite strange as it kind of has done a little spin around, not too uh, indifferent uh, than perhaps other suspicious storms that we've seen in the past. The YouTube demonetization is off the hook. So my on-demand coverage is going to increase as time goes on. And that's going to be the place for a lot of this controversial content. And frankly, just reporting on the news, what's not allowed apparently on the smaller YouTube channels. So this is what we're seeing out of Russia. We're seeing the, uh, the Russia-China army games and a lot of people are excited to see this. They're excited at the idea of World War III, these tanks going back and forth, helicopters. Hell, if the United States has built up a massive military budget, shouldn't Russia and China, the world says, as the world inches closer to World War III. So, first of all, I'm going to share with you this video, uh, and this is just from the last few days. Uh, this is actually a big PR move on the part of Russia, as China saw its own major PR move on the 90th anniversary of the PLA. To those of us that are looking at what this really means, we're seeing World War III. To others, right, that are buying into the propaganda, the idea of kind of like a left-right paradigm, good cop, bad cop, United States, bad cop, Russia, good cop. Russia and China are being positioned, right, to many around the world as the saviors from the West. And this is going to have serious consequences for genuine lovers of freedom worldwide. Now we have a North Korea propaganda video, and it's important to note how these things are increasing. Uh, the, uh, the fears, the threats, the major news occurring around solar flares, occurring around the period of this total eclipse, I don't think it's by accident. I'm not an uh, accident theorist. <laughs> Uh, accidental theorist. I mean, there there seems to be a method to the madness. They seem to really want us afraid and programmed for the inevitable. And I'm hearing Donald Trump supporters talk about the potential need to strike North Korea. I mean, these are people that one day might criticize, as we'll get into, the military industrial complex and the wars overseas only to see them flip their personality. There's a lot of personality flips going on these days. It's not just changes in the cosmos. So it's really strange to see people call for Donald Trump to strike North Korea. Well, tensions remain high on the Korean Peninsula as the U.S. and South Korea have started large-scale joint war games. Now, it comes amid continuing anger from Pyongyang. Prior to the drills, North Korea threatened a merciless strike and warned Washington of the risk of uncontrollable nuclear war. The annual show of force will last for 10 days and simulate a military conflict. Pyongyang claims the drills practice an invasion. The United States is sanctioning as I've been reporting, as the news has been reporting, China, Russia, and Iran. And these are the countries that are going to stand with North Korea. Notice they have demands for the U.S.-South Korea war game drills to end and a major warning to the West in case they strike. But what is the real relationship between China and North Korea? The U.S. Treasury Department blocking 10 companies and six people from access to the U.S. financial system. Washington says each of them helped advance Pyongyang's illegal nuclear or ballistic missile programs.
They include China's Dandong Rich Earth Trading. Washington says it supported Pyongyang's nuclear program. Russia's Gefest M LLC and its director. Washington says it supported Pyongyang's missile development program. A Chinese financial institution called Mingjiang. Three Chinese coal companies, which allegedly imported millions of dollars in DPRK coal. Three Russian and two Singapore-based companies for providing oil to Pyongyang. And Chinese Mansueti Overseas Projects Group is also accused of bringing DPRK workers to Namibia to earn money for Pyongyang. The U.S. Secretary of State says the U.N.-backed sanctions have made a difference. Recently, the USS John McCain slammed into a 600-foot oil tanker in Singapore. And a lot of people are wondering if it's an EMP. Is it a cyber attack? For years, I've, I've warned and read reports about China having the ability to hack our military. And it appears that this is actually being discussed in the Chinese media. We're going to be showing you a lot of clips from the Chinese media tonight. And of course, there's a reason for that. If they could show the world how vulnerable the U.S. Navy is, again, the, the perceivable, undefeatable U.S. Navy. Well, yeah, if they're fighting uh, innocent men, women, and children, or if they're droning people that have nothing but guns to defend them, yeah, the U.S. may come out on top. Uh, but when you're dealing with the United States versus China and Russia, there's been a misunderstanding out there that a lot of people have held onto, that the United States is still holding onto military dominance. They're not aware of the cover-ups regarding the technology transfers to China and Russia and the technologies that China and Russia, they passed on to other countries like Iran, North Korea and other. Early indications point to a steering failure, but there are backup systems for that kind of scenario, which leads to the question, how can it have hit another vessel? We will conduct a thorough and full investigation into this collision, what occurred, what happened and how it happened. The collision making huge news in China. Chinese state media saying the U.S. Navy is, quote, becoming a dangerous obstacle in Asian waters. The USS McCain had recently conducted a sensitive operation near one of China's islands. Foreign ministry officials in Beijing say they are, quote, concerned about the threat and hidden danger posed by the relevant incident to the safety of navigation in the South China Sea and relevant waters. And back here, uncomfortable questions for the authorities. The fourth time now that a U.S. warship has been involved in a collision in Asian waters so far this year. We see, we see a Ron Paul on RT criticizing the secret plan of Donald Trump in Afghanistan, which is widely believed to be widespread genocide. We listen to the way Donald Trump speaks and talks about those people over there. Just to, to wrap up this stuff on, on uh, Trump's speech last night. Um, oh, this is actually, we have a clip. This is, this is uh, one of the more salient points from Trump's speech um, in which he says, you know, I'm just going to do this. I'm not going to tell you what I'm doing, which is actually pretty bizarre. Here he is. We will not talk about numbers of troops or our plans for further military activities. Conditions on the ground, not arbitrary timetables, will guide our strategy from now on. We are not nation building again. We are killing terrorists. They are nothing but thugs and criminals and predators and, that's right, losers. I will not say when we are going to attack, but attack we will. Thugs and criminals and terrorists, right? Sort of how uh, George III described us at one point in time. Terrorists, losers, widespread demonization of the Afghan people. Uh, this is Russia Today talking with Ron Paul about the issue. But I think Trump has been maybe a little bit more upfront. But his goal isn't to get done in six months or a year. It looks like he's planning to be there for the long term. Uh, he knows uh, he wants to increase the troop uh, levels, and he will, but we don't know exactly. And uh, we who are on the pro-peace side think that he should do very, very little without the consent of the Congress. And yet it sounds to me like 
even he wants to uh, give away some of his authority and say, well, the generals are in charge. The generals are in charge. Let them make all the decisions. And, of course, generals are very necessary, very important for national defense. But generals also are trained to uh, uh, kill people. And Trump says that we should be killing more people in Afghanistan. And uh, I think that is a recipe for a disaster. I don't see it coming uh, anyway toward the position that we hold as libertarians. And it's going to be very costly. So I think it will finally end uh, and our empire will end when we run out of money. And uh, that's uh, maybe not in the too distant future. Alex Jones was debating someone recently regarding Trump's strategy. You know, Alex Jones used to fake cry more than likely than a real cry, but um, fake tears for the victims of war in Afghanistan and Iraq. In fact, there's even a bit where he was torturing an iPad to make a point that Americans care more about their iPads than innocent men, women, and children that are dying around the world. Well, it's interesting to see him flip and whether he's just commenting on Donald Trump's Afghan.